It's a rare pleasure to see a German working on a German vehicle. Look at the smile on Silvio's face. <laughs> He's loving every minute of it. We've got an issue with the uh, flak here. It's a Maybach six cylinder engine, but it, it's been a bit cranky. We did actually manage to get the thing started after we had cleaned the spark plugs, but after we shut it down, we we're unable to get the thing running again, which leads me to believe that we've got some ignition system problems. What I'm just getting Silvio to do is to take out the spark plugs to make it easier to rotate the engine with the spark plugs out so we're not fighting compression. Well, this is where I've sort of got to. As much as I don't want to have to do it, I think I'm going to have to take the magneto out. There's a locking screw on the contact points that I just can't get off. Hey, how often is it do you get the chance to take the 1940s era Bosch Magneto out of a genuine Maybach six cylinder engine? That's loose. Got to go up top. Okay, so that's loose. Be very careful not to damage it. Bring this up out of the way if I can. Taking out the kill wire for the mag. Probably gonna have to try and support this a bit. <laughs> so I can wiggle the bolt out. Now, key thing here is not to drop it on my head. Oh, <laughs> it's got a bevel gear. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> when I pulled it out, I realised that it's got a bevel type gear on it, so it doesn't have a keyway or anything like that to set where it fits into the engine. It's going to be super easy to get it a couple of teeth out, which is then going to make it a headache to time this thing up again. So this is the breaker points for the Magneto. This screw here, no matter how hard I tried, I just could not get it loose because it's like super tight. This gap here is super important to the internal timing of the mag. And as far as I can work out, it's around 23, 24 thou, which is a lot more than the 17 to 14 thou that these things are typically set to. Using uh, impact driver, I was able to get the screw loose for the contact points, finally. Like I said, unnecessarily tight. And like most things German, it's not so easy to get the thing off. There we go. So I have given this a bit of a clean, so looking pretty good compared to how they were. First thing I want to do is to actually see at what point the breaker point is opening uh, and it should show us the effect of a points gap that's too big. So if I carefully turn the, the mag in direction of rotation, you probably won't even see it, but... So when the light comes on and the tone sounds, it means that the breakers here are just at the point where normally this would fire the spark off. The breaker points are opening probably about a full tooth too early, which means that the magneto is not providing optimal amount of energy. And this could be one of the reasons why the thing was so difficult to start. So cue a few minutes forward after I've played around with the adjustment of the breaker point gap. Now we've got it so that the breaker is opening at the point of the timing mark. What I want to do next is to then do an actual live test and spin the magneto up and see at what speed it's uh, it's actually generating spark. 
It's early in the morning here at uh, Oz Armour and I've got the uh, lights off in the workshop before everyone arrives. Just to do a bit of a load test of the uh, mag and to also show you guys what a healthy magneto looks like. It's got about a 7mm gap. I'm running the magneto at about 1200 RPM so let's see if it'll jump the gap. Yeah, look at that, that's easy. That's a healthy magneto we've got here. To jump that sort of gap and provide that spark means that even if I don't have the internal settings on it done 100% correct, it's close enough. What I'm gonna play around with next is just to confirm that I've got the internal timing or the e-gap of the magneto as close as possible. I'll start off first. So I'm gonna spin this thing up at basically what should be a cranking speed. Got my tack on here. So it's sort of sparking. I wouldn't say it's completely consistent, but it is trying to spark. And if we run it off the, the impulse coupling, we can see it gives a really nice fat spark. So that's the first initial part of the crank when the engine's getting up to speed. So that, that's working quite well. And it's reasonably consistent. That's with the breaker point set at about 12 thou. Now I'll put it back to how it was set before. So now it's set to about 22,000 for an inch. So I've not quite doubled the gap of the contact points and that's how I found the magneto. Yeah, look at that straight away. The thing's not. It's not even trying to spark. If I turn the speed up to maximum, what does it do? Okay, yeah, so... Even at an indicated speed of 500 RPM, it's, uh, the, the spark is not consistent, so... I think maybe we might have found perhaps what the issue was with this thing. I'm going to have a bit more of a poke around in the engine just to check a few things. I have to keep reminding myself that I'm working on an extremely rare antique from another age. Alright, so what I want to do is undo these beautifully made retainers for the valve cover and get it off and have a look underneath. Sure the gasket stays behind so I don't break that. Beautiful piece of engineering. I mean, it wouldn't look out of place on a lot of modern motors. Because what have we got here? We've got obviously an overhead cam design, but we've got inclined valve, so there must be a dome type combustion chamber, beautifully made castings, roller can followers on the rockers. Silvio's back from taking a break from working on some Russian stuff which he is enjoying so much. What we're going to do is we're going to do a thing where we'll get number one cylinder valves rocking which means that number six is on top dead centre compression. So Silvio can you go ahead and turn the engine clockwise. slowly clockwise in the direction of travel? Source valve on number one, slowly starting to open. It's starting to close. Stop. Mm -hmm. It's the intake valve just started to move. So that's where we'd call it, it's rocking on number one cylinder. So we should find that. Yeah, there you go. So the exhaust and intake valves are uh, loose. So top dead center on number six do five four three and two check those 
check those clearances. Super easy to do just with a thickness gauge. Happy with that. We're just going to turn it so that the valves on number six are rocking. So the number one's on top dead center. Right up. Okay. Yep. Okay, easy, easy does it. So the exhaust valve start in open on number six, which means that the intake will open shortly. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Okay, perfect. So right in the top of that triangle there is the zero mark. Uh, off camera I went through and checked all the remaining valves and they're all adjusted correctly so I'm happy with that and I put the cover back on. Now I'm going to have a go at getting the magneto back in. This magneto is actually quite heavy and I'm on my back so I'm having to bench press this thing up over my head. And I've got to try and get this thing in into mesh in the correct position without losing it. Hmm. This seems too easy. success the uh, timing marks are lined up so it means that I've managed to get the magneto to intermesh with the gear in the engine without knocking it which is no mean feat. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up the mounting bolts for the magneto to the engine block then I'll put the distributor cap back on and put in the ground wire for the P terminal for the ignition circuit and we'll give it a go and see if this thing runs. Now just before uh, I go to start it. I'm going to turn this thing over by hand just to make sure that the engine rotates. It'd be a bit of a tragedy if I put something in wrong with the magneto and I turned it and it broke it. Turning smoothly. Time to put the spark plugs back in. We'll kick it in the guts and see if we can get this thing to run. A standard German military ignition switch, push it in. There we go that was a bit of fun um, driving this thing it's easy and it's hard it's got a terrible driving position so you hunch forward and the steering wheel is at a distinctly unergonomic uh, position but um, as you crank the steering wheel on you can really feel the uh, actual pivot steer through the tracks and the thing can actually turn a surprisingly tight 
radius turn. Things running great, the engine's smooth, pulls cleanly even from very low RPM. It still seems like magic to me the way that the distributors and magnetos and carburetors and fuel pumps and pistons and valves and all that stuff works together that uh, as long as you've got fuel, a bit of spark and mechanically it's time, the engine just wants to go. Interesting point about these types of tracks is that um, this little bolt here opens up a reservoir to hold oil because each of these track segments have bearings and bushes in it that are lubricated by oil and it's I guess yet another example of uh, engineers let loose because the whole idea behind this is to provide a track running surface with the least amount of friction. Works great but pretty complicated unless you keep on top of the, the maintenance. Flak half track, genuine HL42 engine and running gear, all ready to go.